Hello all from Hawaii. We are at the Snapdragon Summit 2025 and I just went hands on with the first phone with 8 Elite Gen 5 and yes we compared it to the 17 Pro. We compared it to the existing 8 Elite phones and you'll not believe how cool is Valtteri Bottas in real life. Yeah that's your boy right there. Subscribe if you're a Bottas fan and who is it? And yes it's 8 Elite Gen 5 and not 8 Elite 2 because hear me out. Gen 1, Gen 2, Elite. 8 Gen 1, 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3, Elite 5. Hey, get it? I mean, it's Qualcomm sometimes, even I don't get it. So this is the new Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 chipset. And yes, this is going to power a lot of Android flagships next year. And this is power pack. Just check out the specs. The 3 nanometer TSMC architecture remains the same, but you get the third gen Orion CPU with prime cores clocked at 4.6 gigahertz now. The six performance cores are at 3.6 GHz and there's a new Adreno GPU clocked at 1.2 GHz with a sliced architecture. The Adreno GPU also gets a new high performance memory so the GPU gets its own 18 MB cache for faster scene rendering, fewer frame drops while using lesser power and games like Wuthering Waves will be supporting this. So yes, upgrades all around and if you look at 8 Elite Gen 5 versus last year's 8 Elite specs, you get the upgraded CPU, the higher clock speeds all around and even when compared to something like the new Dimensity 9500 which was just launched, the 8 Elite Gen 5 has higher clock speed but yeah the Dimensity has a different CPU setup altogether and the GPU is said to be very capable so we'll see how it goes. Anyway this is the first phone with Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and we have been testing it out we ran all the benchmark tests and you've got to check out the scores. I mean look at 8 Elite Gen 5 versus 8 Elite in Geekbench. The Gen 5 almost hits 4000 in single core and crosses 12000 in the multi-core test I mean this is insane. Even the new Dimensity 9500 kind of falls short when you compare things. I mean, these are the official scores from MediaTek and yes, single core score is slightly higher, but in multi-core, the new 8 Elite is just killer. And do note that we ran all the 8 Elite Gen 5 benchmarks in room temperature. In addition to the 8 Elite Gen 5 is again great. It hits 4 million, which is again crazy. And yes, this device does have 24 GB RAM, 1 TB UFS 4.1 storage, which helps. But you can see the jump in CPU and GPU scores compared to the last Gen 8 Elite. Now I know what you're thinking. Is it too late to sell the iPhone 17 Pro you just bought? Because you might wanna, gonna, wanna. Oaks and Geekbench, both the 8 Elite Gen 5 and the A19 Pro are neck to neck, but in multi-core, there's honestly no beating the 8 Elite Gen 5. It's clearly the winner. And not just in Geekbench, in 3D Mark Solar Betas, the 8 Elite Gen 5 absolutely destroys the Apple A19 Pro. I mean, the overall score, the FPS, it's all double. So clearly, the new GPU in 8 Elite is killer. So yes, as we guess, the 8 Elite Gen 5 is powerful. There's a good jump and draw performance, and this looks like it'll be the most powerful smartphone processor out there. But there are two things to note. Number one, I'm not going to count out MediaTek without trying out a Dimensity 9500 phone. And two, just like a kick-ass driver, can't do shit in a shitbox car. No matter how much performance the 8 Elite Gen 5 brings, it all depends on how the Android manufacturers use it, optimize it very importantly. I mean, just ask my buddy, Bottas. I mean, we close, you know. Also, I know with this kind of performance, there's always doubts around thermals and honestly, the device we tested did not seem to have any major heating, even when running benchmarks in room temperature, like I said. But yeah, that is something we'll get an idea on when the lot of flagships with 8 Elite Gen 5 launch. So make sure to subscribe. Anyway, apart from the upgraded CPU and GPU, the 8 Elite Gen 5 also brings a 37% faster hexagon NPU, which will let AI Assistant do tasks across different apps faster and better. The 20-bit ISP is set to be more pro-grade, AI-powered, have four times the dynamic range, and supports the APV codec for almost lossless video recordings with more control for edits while using less storage. And this code is actually from Samsung, free to use for everyone, but definitely something to look forward to in the S26 Ultra. There's also the new X85 modem, the new Wi-Fi chip, which is the first system to include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the ultra wideband chip all in one. And this chip is said to be 40% more efficient with 50% lower latency in gaming. So all good change. As for phones coming with 8 Elite Gen 5, Xiaomi 17 Pro and Pro Max are launching today with this new flagship chipset. And there are more phones coming later. Also, just to confuse you further, Qualcomm has also announced the new 8 Gen 5 processor. And yeah, 8 Gen 5 is separate from 8 Elite Gen 5. Yeah, here we go again. Look, I remember when the Snapdragon 8 Elite launched last year, someone from the Qualcomm team had said that, hey, we're going to beat Apple by an even bigger margin next year. And turn Turns out it was true. I mean, the new 8 Elite Gen 5, except for maybe its name, it's power packed. It's exciting, and yeah, this in turn makes me excited about the new upcoming Android flagships. And I just hope more than anything, Android, you know, app developers, Android makers make use of all this power to bring us more, you know, console level games, more on device AI features. So, yeah, here's hoping. So, my question to you guys is, is what are you going to do with all that power in 8 Elite Gen 5? Scroll reels, play some BGMI, use some. What was that? 
अरे पेरिस गया बाहर से सेकंड ड्राइवर हो बनेगा